Hello friends, welcome to Gyan Gurukuli classes. So today we are going to see why the long run, the long run average cost curve is an L-shaped curve in the modern theory of cost. Okay, it is an L-shaped curve in the according to the modern modern theory of cost. Right, in the uh, in the conventional theory, we learned that the long run average cost curve is also a U-shaped curve. Right, this is a long run average cost curve in the conventional theory. Right, this is a U-shaped curve. But in the modern theory, the curve is not the U-shape curve, rather it looks something like a L-shape. Okay, it looks something like a L-shape. Uh, so this is X. Uh, this is the cost. Uh, if I say the curve in the long run average cost curve in in case of modern theory, it it would go like this. Okay, it would go like this. So this is the long run average cost curve, right? And it doesn't you know in the uh, conventional theory we see that after reaching the optimal minimum point okay uh, or the optimal plan size actually the average cost further increases right here the average cost doesn't increase it uh, you know falls further and further and um, it actually falls as we uh, as the producer increases his production in the long run okay as the producer increases the firm size in the long run the long run average cost curve keeps on falling and falling right that's where we see a, a, a L-shaped curve okay it is L-shaped curve it never increases right it never increases now what are the basic reasons if I say the reasons of this you know L-shaped curve of the long run average cost then the first thing is that because of technical economies of scale because of technical economies of scale what happens the production cost the production cost it decreases right the production cost decreases in the long run right so why now see this technical economy may be achieved for different reasons right this technical efficiency you can achieve this technical efficiency or the technical economies of scale because of various reasons what could be the possible reasons okay so let's say the first one is that once you you know obtain a minimum level of optimal size of the plant okay as the farm as the as the size of the firm okay as the size of the firm increases it increases increases and you achieve you achieve the uh, you know minimum optimal size okay you have, uh, you receive the minimum optimal size then what happens then the economies from further decentralization and improvement in skills could be achieved right that means you receive the op uh, minimum optimal size therefore the firm has increased to such a size that now you can resort to further and further or more of more you know specialization specialization and division of labor right more specialization or division of labor right okay right see at a very low size of the firm if the firm size is very low okay let's say this is the firm and the size is very low the here division of division of labor is very difficult okay the division of labor is very difficult in order to ensure the specialization or division of labor the firm must be of a high size okay the firm must be of a high size here it should achieve at least the minimum minimum size right if you in the real world if you see let's uh, let's take an example of a particular uh, micro enterprise okay in a particular micro enterprise employing 20 to 30 labor it is very difficult it is very difficult for division of labor but if you if you take the example of a giant company okay let's say pepsi okay let's say the soft drink making company pepsi right now pepsi is a food processing industry right now it is a very big company here some of the some of the employee may used in you know handling containers some of the uh, employee may be you know busy making pots okay some of may be uh, busy making the recipe right so here the division of labor becomes more prominent okay it becomes more effective right so once once in the long run in the long run as the firm size increases and the firm particularly receives a minimum optimal size right minimum optimal size once you receive that minimum optimal size then it becomes easier for specialization and division of labor clear now this division of labor would give us economies of scale right economies of scale we have already know that division of labor is a very effective way and the industrial revolution if we see it was based on basically the division of labor the adam smith have uh, made the statement that you know division of labor is very effective in order to increase the production okay right so 
this leads to economies of scale and increase in therefore increase in production right this is the first thing then if i say the second thing you you can see that the lower repairs cost may be attained if the farm reaches a certain size okay see if the farm is very low uh, the farm size of the farm is very low then it is difficult for the farm to uh, keep people or keep employees who can effectively look after the maintenance of the machines and okay who can effectively look after the maintenance of machines and other equipment right now if the plant becomes a you know it reaches the minimum optimal size right the farm, when the farm becomes you know large in that case it could effectively you know repair its ma machines and equipment right it could effectively repair the machines or other equipment okay right now see it can employ some it can em employ some people or labor who are you know mechanics right it can employ some mechanics keep on employing them if the farm size is very high okay okay so these things can help in repairing the machines and equipments which should also lead to fall in the cost of the farm okay which should also lead to fall in the cost of the farm right then the third point if i see the third point is that see in the long run okay in the long run if if production becomes a very high if production becomes you know at a very high scale okay if you start producing at a very large scale okay the large scale production gives you ample opportunity to you know produce some of its raw materials in your own company's backyard okay now it gives us the chance to pro the production of some inputs okay some inputs or raw materials raw materials in the company itself okay in the farm itself right okay see previously let's say you are a car manufacturing company okay you are a, a very uh, uh, you know known car manufacturing company at the initial stages what happens you have to you have to um, you know ex import the wheels of the car okay you have to import the wheels of the car right let's suppose that initially when you were a small firm then you have to import the wheels of the car right now when you become very large okay when you become very large now you can effectively produce these raw materials or the uh, some sort of inputs okay in the whole whole car this is a particular a particular part is let's suppose it is an input right so this this wheel can you can now produce the company can produce this wheel in its own farm because of as the farm size have increased okay just because the farm size has increased it can now produce effectively some of its inputs or factors of product, uh, some of the inputs or the raw materials which are you know used in the manufacture of the particular product now you can produce those raw materials or inputs in your own farm right right this will also lead to reduction in cost right this would also lead to reduction in cost okay now above all one further thing is that in the long run if i talking about the long run it is obvious that technology is going to upgrade okay see in the short run the technology remains fixed but the technology is going to uh, you know increase or enhance in the long run right the technology in a mobile phone manufacturing the in a world have used in say 2008 is not used in 2018 or it have improved okay the technology that was used in mobile manufacturing in 2008 was outdated in 2018 and now they uses a more superior technology right more superior technology okay so in that case what would happen the cost per unit would fall okay the cost per unit or the average cost would fall obviously because the technology have in enhanced or increased therefore the average cost would fall so that is the fourth reason okay the technological change also could lead to a fall in the production cost right now these are the reasons that could lead to the fall in the uh, production cost or the average cost right because of economies of scale what what we have find the reason sir because one is the specialization or division of labor is now possible as the farm has reached the op minimum optimal size that is one thing then the second thing is that it could now 
repaired machines and equipments effectively in its own form right it could employ uh, mechanics okay it could keep mechanics of some um, uh, machines and equipments for proper maintenance right that could also lead to uh, cost reduction then third if i see the large scale production leads to lead or to give the firm opportunity to produce some of its input the raw materials in the firm itself right that would also lead to economies of scale and therefore decrease cost and fourthly what we have found that in the long run technology keeps on changing right technology keeps on updating and because of the technological upgrade the average cost of the firm falls right now there are some again some uh, reasons which could also increase the average cost okay there are some reasons which could increase the average cost one prominent among them is managerial cost okay one one prominent among them is managerial cost of the firm see when the firm is small okay when the size of the firm is small the managerial cost was okay the managerial cost was low right okay now when the firm becomes very high right when the firm becomes very high now the managerial cost should increase okay you have to employ more managers or if i say the effective capacity of the manager okay if uh, the uh, the capacity of a particular manager for one person okay if he can you know maintain or preside over or uh, he can effectively monitor okay he can effectively monitor over say 100 laborers okay 100 laborers now as the farm size of increase let's say the laborer increase to 150 okay labor increase to 150 now if i employ only one manager then this should lead to you know managerial inefficiency okay and managerial inefficiency is a type of cost for the firm right it would lead to uh, following the production level of the firm which would increase the average cost right or we can say now if uh, when the farm size was uh, low or the farm size was very small then you didn't need any managers okay you can effectively the uh, owner of the farm the owner could himself you know monitor all the production and distribution activities of the farm right he could effectively monitor but as the farm size increase in the long run as the farm size increase now he had to you know employ managers right for different different uh, segments of the farm different segments of the production of the farm he have to employ employ more managers and therefore increase in managerial expenses right managerial expenses would increase therefore these are some reasons that would lead to increase in the managerial cost in the long run okay it will lead to managerial cost in the long run remember one thing see initially managerial cost may decline okay initially as suppose you have employed one labor oh sorry one manager okay you have employed one manager and you had 50 laborers okay now up to 100 laborers he could effectively let's suppose that up to 100 laborers he could effectively monitor okay up to 100 laborers he could effectively monitor now as you have 50 50 laborers at the initial stage as you further increase the production okay as you further increase the production up to 100 the his effectiveness would increase and therefore managerial cost would decrease but beyond the certain level okay beyond the certain level when you increase the increase the farm size in the long run then managerial cost is bound to increase okay the managerial cost is bound to increase right but the thing is what the modern modern theorist of cost modern um, proponents of the modern uh, theory of cost they say they say that the technical okay the technical efficiency or the technical economies of scale we received okay the technical economies of scale uh, that the producer received from production uh, uh, from effective ways i have already talked to you uh, in uh, about this the technical economies of scale right in the production process so now the technical production uh, the technical economies of scale that you can achieve in the long run is greater than the fall in okay the fall in uh, managerial efficiency or we can say the managerial cost increases right the increase in managerial cost is actually less than the rise in economic efficiency because of technical economies of scale here the technical economies of scale is larger than the managerial cost increase right and that would lead to actually that would lead to you know fall in average cost okay that will lead to fall in the average cost forever and that's why we see a a falling a falling average cost curve or a long run average cost curve is of a l shape right it is a l shape curve or we can say 
it continues keep on it keeps on falling and falling okay it never um, never come to a lowest minimum point okay like we uh, find in case of the conventional theory here there is no lowest minimum point okay in the long run it keeps in keeps in falling okay that is uh, that that's all you have to learn from this lesson so thank you and please like and uh, share our videos also subscribe to our channel and if, if you have any doubts and queries then let us know by commenting so thank you and have a good day